it's the most basic of all game concepts. You click a button, you get money. Then you buy things with that money to click the button for you. Then you use that money to buy better things to click that button even faster. Then you use the money from those better things to buy even better things to click that button even faster. Sounds boring, right? But what if I told you that this isn't just one game, but a whole genre of games? A genre of games complete with passionate fans and a dedicated community including a subreddit of nearly 50,000 users. Games such as Cookie Clickers, Clicker Heroes, Idle Farmer, Swarm Simulator, Time Clicker, Big Dig Treasure Clicker, Idle Web Tycoon, Commodore Clicker, Grindcraft, Clicker Monsters, Goblin Treasure Hunt, Idle Planet Defender, Super Idle Imagination. It's a game where your end goal is to not even have to play. Although many would argue that it's not really a game at all, that you don't do enough for it to be classified as a game. But as someone who at one point had multiple tabs of these games open at one time, let me tell you right now that there is a difference between a good clicker game and a bad clicker game. What is a clicker slash idle slash incremental game? A definition is important here because just using the description, well, it's a game where all you do is click to progress, is too vague and could possibly loop in other unrelated games like point and click adventure games, for example, or even a game like RuneScape. Many skills in RuneScape, such as fire making, involve the player clicking one time, then sitting there, waiting for your character to be done before repeating the same action. Some skills, like smelting ore, even give you a timer to tell you how long it'll take until the job is done. These actions are considered easy to AFK, as you can click once and do something else, then come back a minute later and do it all over again. Heck, I'm doing it right now as I'm writing this. However, as anyone who has a lot of playtime in RuneScape will tell you, the game has many more dimensions than just simply clicking, and that's why we need to be more specific with our definition. Wikipedia actually has a page on this, and the definition they use is, whose gameplay consists of the player performing simple actions such as clicking on the screen repeatedly or grinding to earn currency. In some games, even the clicking becomes unnecessary after time as the game plays itself, including in the player's absence, hence the moniker Idle Game. Great, so now we can officially check off games like RuneScape and other point and click adventure games like Telltale Games, as at no point does the clicking become unnecessary and you can't really progress in the game if you're not actively playing it. But what exactly is progressing while not playing? In theory, could you just start the game once and never go back to it and come back to having the game be completed? What kind of mechanics would you generally find with these kind of games? Well, you would need something to click and something to gain from it. You would need something to make the clicking more powerful and or something to do the clicking for you. And you should earn currency when you're not playing. Due to the nature of these games, there will undoubtedly be moments where you have to sit around and wait for more money before you can move forward. A great mechanic to these games are when you shut them off and come back the next day, you find that you've actually made tons of money while you were gone and can now continue on your way to gain more. Many games will feature some sort of while you were gone screen which will give you a rundown of just how much you made while you were asleep in your bed. However, I find with any idle game, one of the key elements is that, while the game should always progress when you're not playing it, it should be way more effective to play anyways. And this is where these games start to get worryingly addictive. A good example of this is the app Idle Miner Tycoon. While you earn resources while the app is off, when you're active in it, there are a bunch of bonuses and multipliers that you can activate and make it more worth your while. Believe it or not, this is a mechanic not exclusive to these games. A good example of how this mechanic is used in other games would be like Fable 2. Throughout the game, you can buy and in turn rent out property. Once you turn off the game and eventually come back to it, you'll gain a small percentage of the rent while you were gone. And what about the ending to these games? You might look at this and go, well I could just keep making money forever, so what's the point? And then you stop playing. And if you're that type of person, chances are you've never played nor ever will play one of these games. Sometimes the ending of the game is right in front of you. It's that last power-up that you have to save up for, but once you get it, the game kind of falls flat, because why keep playing at that point? Sometimes the games have that one final power-up, and you go and you reach for it, but you lose interest due to the lack of variations or skills along the way. 
Truly, these games never really end until you close them for the last time, never to reopen them. However, there is a way to stretch out that time significantly with the use of the Ascension mechanic. So what is Ascension? Check this out. When you click this button, you do 10 points of damage to that monster. You can hire guys to help you damage the monster, probably doing 1 or 2 damage every second, and you can also click this button to make it so that you do more damage per click. You also have to kill every monster under a certain time limit. Every time you defeat a monster, you get gold to level everything up. But every time you level things up, the upgrades become more expensive. As well as this, every time the monster is defeated, it becomes more powerful with more health. Eventually, you will hit a point where you cannot conceivably click fast enough to defeat the monster, and it would take way too long and be way too expensive to upgrade anything. This is where Ascension comes in. Generally, games will have a certain level or milestone that once you reach, you now have the option to ascend. Ascending will give you a bonus, whether it be you get more gold, more time to kill the monster, or you do more damage. Now, you replay the game from the very beginning again, but you get to where you were much faster and beyond. Then you get stuck again, then you ascend again, and it never ends. But every time you feel a sense of accomplishment as you blast past your old checkpoint, stronger and in less time. Now keep in mind, not every game has this sort of system, and in fact, some games lack an entire reason to continue to play at all. I'll be the first to admit that. But an ascension system is a huge piece into making these games playable long term. A comparison to how this mechanic is applied outside of the idle game is any game with a new game plus system that allows you to start over but maintain some sort of benefit from your previous playthrough. Examples could be something like the Golden Nug from Dragon Age Inquisition, allowing you to carry over all of your recipes from one playthrough to the next, or the Infamy system in Payday 2, in which you basically sacrifice all of your skills, but you get them back much faster while playing again. The last thing I want to talk about before we dive into specifics is the use of an auto-clicker. Now there are plenty of programs that you can download to make your mouse click every 10 seconds, 1 second, 0.01 seconds, and there are surprisingly, or non-surprisingly depending on how you look at it, many discussions and arguments about the use of these clickers in these games. Some argue that it cheapens the experience and that the developer didn't intend for you to use an auto-clicker, to which I say that might be a stretch. Well, others say it would be an extreme waste of time not to use one. There's also a risk of injury if you just sit there clicking for 4 hours straight. I'm personally of the mindset of, if your game is still compelling even with me using an auto-clicker, it's probably one of the better games. However, in some cases you'll see that even with or without an auto-clicker, a game just isn't worth more than a passing glance. Now, before we do anything, I just want to clarify, I am not a reviewer, but more someone who just loves games and I want to have a conversation about them. I'll be talking about games, some well made and some not so well made, but it's in no way my intention to put down someone's creation. After all, they're the ones who made the game and that's something I just don't know how to do. Out of the blue here, let's just look at, I don't know, idle woodcutting. Well, this is it. The entire game, right here. Click a tree, upgrade, click the tree some more, that's it. There's no real mystery in what's coming next and you can see it right in front of you. The goals aren't even that difficult to reach in the first place. There's nothing that makes me want to play this game and bear in mind that gameplay in idle games isn't exactly groundbreaking stuff to begin with. Another similar game like this is Idle Web Tycoon. While it looks a little bit nicer, this is the entire game right here. There's nothing that makes you want to keep playing it. The end game is immediately within sight, which tends to make it a little less desirable. Here we have Fidget Spinner Idle, which is pretty similar. You can see the entire game ahead of you, except it caps off how fast you click unless you buy certain upgrades. So even if you're just an extremely fast clicker, you can still get stopped at a certain point and you just have to wait until you have the money to upgrade. You can get different fidget spinners in this one, but all it does is give you more money, and once you have the last one, there doesn't seem to be anything else left to buy. Now obviously we're setting the bar pretty low, and I'm not expecting every free flash game on the internet to have groundbreaking gameplay. There's literally hundreds of games like this, so I'll spare you the repetitiveness, and for now, let's just look at some of the games that stood out to me, but still lack a little... something. Grindcraft actually had a really cool idea, but then it just got confusing. 
You click to get the resources to build stuff, and you can buy villagers and workers who will get the stuff for you. So you have to buy villagers and tools to buy the workers, but all the workers need a house, or a fancier house depending on the job they do, and then the amount of resources gets so insanely high that even with an auto clicker, it takes forever to do something. And the layout they give you doesn't help, it's scattered all over the place. Look at this for example, you need to buy a leather helmet, chest piece, legs, and boots to make a leather soldier. Instead of using those items, they make it so you have to buy a set of leather armor with the leather armor pieces that you already have. Why not just make it so that once you have the pieces, you can make the soldier. There are also so many extra and unneeded buttons, and it kind of hits you all at once once you start the game. It doesn't teach you what any of these are for. I've been making soldiers, and I'm not really sure why. I appreciate the thought and effort that went into this game, but it just makes me want to play Minecraft instead. Hero Simulator this one isn't too bad, it actually looks pretty nice, but once again it falls short of having a reason to keep playing. Once you finish all the quests, buy all the weapons, wear all the armor, domesticate all the animals, you can search for the Holy Grail. The Grail works as this game's ascension. However, finishing Hero Simulator doesn't take that long in the first place. With leaving the game open and checking back every hour or so, I was done in less than a day, and at no point was I really given the impression that there'd be much more to do the second time around. Big Dig Treasure Clickers had tons of skills which changed up the game for a little bit. First you had to scan the ground to see if there was an item there, then you had to dig for it. You can hire diggers to dig for you, but when they ran low on energy they needed coffee and they were essentially useless without it, meaning that when you left the game and came back and you weren't giving them coffee, very little was done. You could go to the museum to see what you had collected, but after a while it becomes apparent that you're in for a very very long grind and there's not going to be much of a reward for it. Idle Farmer was very similar to Big Dig Treasure. The game gave you certain missions to complete, and you could leave the game on its own for a while, get married, and raise animals, and it's, oh my god, it's Stardew Valley. In all honesty, it feels like had they kept going with a farming type game, they could have had something really cool, but then again, it wouldn't be an idle game and we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Speaking of farming games, if anyone remembers Farmville, Farmville is exactly the type of game that we're talking about right now. I remember being in my high school computer lab playing Farmville instead of doing actual work. It's a great example of how many people got into the game simply because you only had to play for 5 minutes every day to make progress. Now obviously if I was trying to convince you to play one of these games, I would have done a terrible job so far, because all I've done is shown you games that I personally wouldn't play. So why don't we look into some games that are a little bit better, and while we're at them, I'll tell you what makes them better. Now keep in mind we're not going to dive too deep into these, reason being that because these games have so much in them, there's so much to discover, and if this video makes you want to try any of these, it could be fun to discover it for yourself. And in some cases, I would just be here forever trying to explain every little feature because the games are so much more complicated. Swarm Simulator Alright, so appearance-wise, it's admittedly pretty lackluster, not very high on the graphics score. This game starts with a drone. Use the drone to collect meat. For every 10 meat you have, you can get another drone. Eventually, once you have 100 drones, you can use them to buy a queen. Queens produce drones. 1,000 queens will buy you a nest, which in turn makes queens. 10,000 nests gets you a greater queen, which produces nests. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. You can also create an army to collect territory. However, there is a limit to this and it depends on how much larvae you have. You only get a set amount of larvae per second, but you can increase this with some upgrades such as getting more territory, collecting more meat, or even accomplishing the in-game achievements. Staying on top of larvae production is really key to this game. Later in the game, you can also unlock energy, which regenerates a certain amount every second. Energy abilities can instantly give you larvae or travel into the future by 15 minutes, or even clone your entire army. What makes this game better is that the end is pretty much never in sight. Eventually you will hit a standstill where you'll be waiting forever to get to the next layer or you're not making larvae fast enough for consistent production. Ascending gives you mutagens. Mutagens can be put into abilities that range from increasing larvae production, increasing the power of your energy abilities, or even how much energy is produced per second. You then start the game again, only this time with these abilities you hit where you were before and beyond wash, rinse, and repeat. Suddenly, we've come a long way from woodcutting simulator, haven't we? Now, this game definitely fits more into the idle category rather than the clicker category, but it still follows that main principle of being active is better. 
When you decide you step away and log back in, it feels fresh once you see all the meat and larvae you've collected whilst you were gone, and you can go back to watching the numbers go so insanely high that you're not really sure how to pronounce them anymore. One of my favorite things about this game is that it gives you time estimates for how long it would be until you can afford certain upgrades if you were not to buy anything else. Oh man, I won't be able to buy this upgrade for... a few million years. As I said before, it is a little lackluster on the visual side, but literally as I'm writing this, Swarm Simulator 2 is released, and as far as I can tell, it's the same game, but a little nicer to look at. One of the most prolific idle games that you may have heard of before is Cookie Clickers. Cookie Clickers has a variety of upgrades, achievements, and evil demon grandmothers, but we'll get to that. Once you reach a high enough level and you ascend, you get Heavenly Chips, or Prestige. The Prestige gives you a certain percentage bonus to production based on how many Heavenly Chips you have. The game takes a weird twist when you buy the upgrade one mine and continue down the path it gives you. Eventually the grandmas will turn into the Grand Matriarch and start spawning these terrible looking creatures and what the heck just happened? This game was about clicking cookies and now it's giving me nightmares. Honestly, the game is so deep and has so many different little twists and turns and apparently they're adding dungeons and heroes and I'm not even really sure what else. I haven't played the game in almost two years now, mainly because there's an achievement that requires you to cheat to get it, and once I got it, I lost interest because I could literally do anything. Unlike Swarm Simulator, Cookie Clickers is one of the most active idle games out there. There is no offline progression, so the game always needs to be open. If you want to make any sort of decent progress, you'll want an auto-clicker focused on the game at all times. The game is being updated as recently as August 8th of 2018, where the developers even thanked their players for playing, quote, the dumbest game known to mankind. Now, of all the games I mentioned here so far, they're all browser games, appearing on random game sites like One More Level or Congregate. It wasn't long before more polished games started appearing on Steam to, well, mixed reviews. The stakes are raised to an incredibly higher level once you bring in the idea of paying for the game, and the argument could very well be made that no idle game would really be worth paying money for. While I won't be looking at any games that require payment, let's look into some of the games that are free and rated well on Steam. Soda Dungeon actually has quite a few layers to it. You hire adventurers in the tavern, send them to the dungeon, collect gold, buy better adventurers, get better equipment for the adventurers you have, fight bosses, learn spells, get enchanted weapons. One thing that's great about Soda Dungeon is that you can actually choose to play it as a turn-based fighting game. There is an auto button in the corner that will allow your adventurers to go through as far as they can, but sometimes you hit a higher level or a boss where you might want to take over for yourself. Soda Dungeon is really great because it knows exactly what type of game it is. For example, during your travels you will end up with tons and tons of equipment that you'll probably never need, and for this situation they have the liquidate button in the store, which sells everything that you have more than 5 of. In a game where you handle so much loot, having this button is extremely nice. After you hit level 1000, you can ascend to a different dimension and restart all over again, this time with the ability to gain essence and the ability to level up your relic sodas, which give you permanent upgrades. This game also gives you the options to buy things with real money, like adventures, items, and permanent upgrades that would otherwise literally take hundreds of hours to unlock, but in no way does the game force you or make you feel like you have to buy them to progress. Besides this, there are two dungeons you can go through, as well as 3v3 arena mode that can give you some extra bonuses. They still do small updates from time to time, like the current Halloween theme going on at the time of this recording, and a sequel has already been announced. You'll definitely want to play this one for 2 or 3 hours before walking away on this one, but once you get rolling, it's very easy to leave it on the background for an hour while still making progress. Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, an actual Dungeons & Dragons idol game. This game has some serious depth to it. It's got a story, it's got named characters who have individual backstories, it's got inventories for your individual heroes. Your heroes also have a health bar and can potentially die during a wave. My biggest concern with it is that it really pushes the definition of an idol game. When you die, you get sent back to the wave before to grind for gold until you click to progress forward again. After playing active since the very start of the game, I still died on my first attempt at fighting a boss and I had to grind more. 
at no point in my brief time playing did I feel like I could just walk away and still make decent progress. If I was going to do nothing and just get gold, I might as well turn off the game, wait for a day for it to accumulate, and then come back. Ugh, got killed by these rats. Time to kill more drunk people and take their money. Once you finish a quest in Idol Champions and move on to the next area, your heroes disappear, you lose all your resources, and you start from the bottom again, keeping just your equipment. I've already talked about ascension mechanics, and this game is no different, giving me blessings. Unspent, they increase how much gold I receive, but I can use them to increase other things such as champion damage, ability cooldowns, and even the rate at which I receive blessings in the future. Now, don't get me wrong, there is absolutely a place for this kind of game. It lets you stay involved, customize your character and layout, has a ton of strategy involved, special abilities you can use in boss fights, and playing just for a brief time, it's easy to see that there are a ton of things to do with this game. The game also features a heavy pay to advance system as evidenced by some of these heroes that you can buy for up to $60. Some of the heroes are even de And later on in the game you can unlock Minx aka the best Boulders Gate character. Sorry, and Boo. Minx and Boo. Now, there's one game in particular that we need to talk about. And that game is Clicker Heroes. Look at that. Look at that. Over 7,600 hours. That is nearly 316 days of gameplay. Granted, a lot of it was idle, but far too much of it was not. I downloaded Clicker Heroes off a whim for a video I was doing with my friend four years ago, and here's a sample of his general reaction. Fang is mad at me because I'm playing Cookie Clicker. And I was like, we should play Cookie Heroes, Clicker Hero. I don't. I, I forgot what it's called. Clicker Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's like, whatever. Here. I don't. Now, Chad, I'm in level two, so they're a little bit more powerful. So what? You just click more? Yeah. See, but I get more gold when I kill them. I all all these a lot of these monsters look the same. Well, yeah, exactly they're, they're the a, same. But they're a higher level. Exactly the same. Pokemon don't look different when they level up all the time. So they have to wait, you have to wait till they evolve they go to a certain level. Oh, because I, oh. you need to appreciate click your games cuz obviously there's a, there's an audience for them like people really enjoy this stuff. And see look it's a little harder, a little slower. Oh wow, it's like you're clicking it more. Yeah, it's a little slower to kill, but I mean it's still it's, it's still pretty good. So look at the different I'm, from level 2. Look at all the gold I'm collecting though, dude. Now look, look, I can hire tree beast. Look at all the dam Look, now now it's doing damage for me. I don't even have to be here. I can leave the game. And it's doing damage. So for you me. don't even have to click. Yeah. Now it. Now this is the. This is the late. The one thing the game has, you don't even have to do anymore. This is the been, meta it's game. Been it's two like, minutes. It's a lot like Cookie. Click. It's been two minutes, it's and you don't even have to play anymore. It's a lot like Cookie Clicker. You Clicker Heroes starts off extremely slow, but eventually you will gain the ability to ascend, which gives you Hero Souls. Hero Souls can be used to buy Ancients, in which there are 26 different Agents, all with their own bonuses, effects, and price structure. This is where the playstyles becomes a factor, as you can choose to have an idle build or an active build. For an idle build, there are Ancients that multiply your damage and income intakes if you haven't clicked for 60 seconds. For an active build, there are Ancients that increase click damage, increase how much critical damage you do, and even allow you to build up a clicking combo which increases your damage every time you click. There are also ancients that help with general progression, such as decreasing boss life, increasing boss timers, and more hero souls per ascension. If you're in an active build, you'll also want to use the skills which are gradually unlocked by buying upgrades for your heroes. They'll do such things as a double damage, double gold, or increase the chance of critical hits for a limited time. The time that the skills are applied for can also be increased through ancients. Another active aspect to the game are the fish that appear on screen at random times. Clicking a fish will give you gold and sometimes rubies. Rubies are Clicker Hero's cash grab, although they tend to give out many for free anyways. Rubies can be bought with real money and can be used to buy things such as hero souls, gold, or auto clickers within the game. Another aspect of the game are the mercenaries. Mercenaries can be sent on quests ranging from 5 minutes to 2 days, and can be sent to activate skills, collect hero souls, collect rubies, or simply collect gold. The more successful missions the mercenaries go on, the more they level up and the more effective they become. However, should they die, you'll have to bury them or spend rubies to revive them. Mercenaries can also be sent to collect relics, which are items you would otherwise only gain once per run. Relics at certain levels to your ancients. 
After an ascension, you keep your ancients and relics, and continue the game from the beginning again, and each time you'll notice you're getting faster and faster. Although eventually, you will hit a standstill, and this is where Transcension comes in. Transcending will award ancient souls and take you straight to the beginning of the game again. No souls, no ancients, no heroes. But the ancient souls can be used on insanely powerful upgrades, such as increasing the effectiveness of idle bonuses by a thousand percent, reducing the general cost of ancients, or increasing the effectiveness of the ancient Solomon, which will allow you to build more powerful runs all over again. Finally, the last aspect of Clicker Heroes is the clan system. Together, you and friends can join a clan and attack bosses up to a few times per day. With every boss defeat, everyone in the clan gains hero souls relative to what their highest level in their current transcension is. A multiplayer feature is something that very few of these games have, and it really allows for you to work with your clan members to help them get better. The company that made Clicker Heroes announced and recently launched Clicker Heroes 2, and a part of me really wanted to try it despite not having played the original for quite some time. Until I saw it was over $30. After putting in over 7,000 hours in the original and admittedly spending some money on rubies if only to give back to the developers who gave me so much entertainment, I felt justified in saying, I'll skip this one. The last thing I want to cover is perhaps the most dangerous and time-consuming idle game of all time. Yes, even more than Clicker Heroes. And that, my friend, is the mobile game. Look at how many there are in the store, and they exist for mainly one reason, to make money. Watch an ad to get ahead, pay 100 bucks to speed everything up, double your offline money by watching an ad, get free stuff for watching an ad, in the middle of doing something, screw it, watch an ad anyways. As if I didn't spend enough time wanting to sign back on and collect my money, now my phone has notifications reminding me every 12 seconds to sign back in. Now, I'm not saying developers shouldn't get paid for their work. The app is free and they need to make money somehow. But sometimes the ads are so excessive and intrusive that it makes the experience unenjoyable and I just end up deleting the app within minutes of downloading it. But seriously, look at these. Some of these games have over 10 million downloads. These are the perfect kind of games for people to play on their break at work or when they're about to go to sleep, when they're on the couch and watching TV. And you have to imagine a large fraction of these numbers are young children playing on iPads and tablets. You've got to wonder how many dead phone batteries and large data bills these games are responsible for. Now admittedly, I used to have a bunch of these on my phone, and I would be lying at bed at 1am thinking I'd check on everything real quick, then I'd look at the time realizing it was 2.30 and I still hadn't gone to sleep. I will say though, it seems oddly more socially acceptable to be on your phone playing these games than say, being at home on your computer doing the exact same thing. In some cases, you can do the exact same thing. Clicker Heroes and Cookie Clicker both have their own mobile versions. Wow, so... That's a lot to talk about when it comes to a game where, supposedly, we're not really doing anything. So, you might be thinking, why do people play these games? Well, we love to feel like we're always making progress, watching the numbers climb higher and higher, knowing that even when the game is off, we get to sign on the next day and see the new levels we hit while we were sleeping. To many people, it's simply just something to have on in the background. It's a side project where it allows us to feel like we're playing a game while focusing on something else. It's completely stress-free. There's no punishment for getting anything wrong. But then there's the other side to it. It's a game that, in theory, never ends. It's addictive because you know that the higher level is always within reach. It starts off as a game that you have on in the background, but then it slowly transitions to the main focus of your attention. It becomes a distraction as you try to focus on other things. You start planning your day around logging in on these games. You see it there in the toolbar or on your phone and you just have to check to see how you're doing. Going on for 10 minutes quickly becomes 30 and suddenly you've spent two hours playing this game. And yes, while I would say a majority of these 7,600 hours I've logged into Clicker Heroes were spent idle, I shudder to think about how much time I spent actively looking at the screen at 2am instead of going to sleep. Am I judging people who play these games? Of course not. While I don't anymore, I played these games for a long time. I see the fun in it where a lot of other people don't. But would I ever recommend that someone play an idle game? Truthfully I wouldn't. 
These games are designed to suck you in. They want you to spend every waking moment thinking about signing back on to keep progressing, and with these games dominating the mobile market, they're more accessible now than ever. These games are fun in moderation, but not everyone has the willpower to do that. Recording this video and collecting all the footage was difficult, because I found myself having to be careful. I could feel myself getting sucked back in. But look, that's just one person's opinion. Play what you want. Experience what you want to experience. But I urge you to consider if your time could be better spent playing something else. We're only given a short precious time on earth, my friends. Make a count. Play some good games. Hey everyone, my name is Ghostboy. Thank you so much for watching the first ever Reality Escape video. Subscribe and stick around. Uh, there's going to be more coming out. If you like me and you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Ghostboy259. I've also got a Let's Play channel, Jaffer Dub, and you can watch me play games. I played A Way Out with my friend Racevic. Was there something here that maybe I said that you disagree with or an idle game you really love that you want to talk about? Leave a comment down below and if I get enough responses, I'm going to make a follow-up video where I, I talk about all the responses that I've gotten and, uh, and share my opinions on those and we'll keep the conversation going back and forth. Uh, until then, I hope you stick around. I've got more stuff coming out soon. Uh, have a great new year if you're watching this in the, a, a, a year that hasn't happened yet. And uh, thank you once again. Yeah, cool. All right, that was weird.